Have you ever been told no in business? Yeah, we've all been there and it's not pleasant, especially if we've put in a lot of work to submit a proposal and secure a working engagement. But all business owners go through this and in time they learn how to cope with it and how to move on from it. In this video, I am sharing my strategies for dealing with rejection in business. Hello and welcome to the Savvy Corner. If you're new here, my name is Alisa and this channel is all about helping you manage your money, your business and your mind around it. If this is something that you're interested in, why not join the Savvy Corner community by subscribing? Don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Last week was a great week for me, but towards the end of it, I received an email informing me that my services are not needed for a contract that I was hoping to secure. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't overjoyed. I don't think I will ever get to a place where I will shed tears of joy for not getting a piece of work. But at the same time, I wasn't going to let that ruin a perfectly good week. These things happen, it's not the first time it's happened to me, and I know it's not going to be the last one. I learned how to manage these situations and in the next few minutes, I want to share with you a few tips for dealing with rejection in business as a service-based entrepreneur. Let's start by acknowledging that the very fact that you were invited to submit a proposal or had a conversation with someone who was interested in working with you is a big win. It shows that your work is relevant enough, interesting enough, good enough for others to want to hear more about what you have to offer. It's very easy to forget this, but getting at the proposal stage or at the negotiation stage is an indication of the quality of your work and your reputation and it puts you in a place that not many other business owners get to. So take a moment and be proud of that. Be proud for having had the determination and the discipline to get to this stage. Whether you submitted a proposal or simply had a conversation with someone with regards to working together, I strongly recommend that you ask them for feedback. They would have had some criteria for selecting who to work with, and you should find out what was the defining factor that determined them to make a decision? What was missing from your proposal? What else were they expecting and so on? Their response will be extremely useful for you if you ever want to submit a proposal for similar work again. And the fact that someone said no to your services should definitely not prevent you from trying again. But anything you can find out to refine future proposals is invaluable, so don't miss the opportunity to ask for feedback. There is one thing I want to specifically mention when it comes to feedback. Some people or organizations might come back to you saying that you were above budget or that someone else could do it cheaper and therefore they decided to go with them. Please don't let this mean that your services are too expensive and you should now lower your prices. This might be the case in some circumstances and I encourage you to try and find more details about their budget before you even submit a proposal. But I want you to know that you are out of our budget is a very common way of dismissing someone quickly because there are very few counter arguments to it. I mean, you can't argue with that, right? What are you going to say? No, I wasn't over your budget. People know this and therefore they use it to their advantage sometimes. So take that with a pinch of salt and don't be tempted to lower your prices because of a response like that. Do your homework in advance. Try to find a benchmark for the kind of service you offer and price accordingly based on that and the experience and the value that you bring to the table. Having said that, some people or organizations will always go with the cheapest option or even expect you to do it for free. Now, it's up to you what kind of pro bono work you want to undertake, if any, but I personally try to stay away from what I call bargain hunters, who always haggle on the price, yet expect the quality to be top notch. I find it frustrating to work with them, and I'd rather save my time and energy. It's your call what you want to do, of course, but I thought I would share my experience. If you're finding the video useful so far, I would appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really helps to support the channel and I thank you in advance if you do. The next strategy I have for you is to use the feedback you receive 
and based on it and your experience going through the process to write down some lessons learned. This will be very useful to refer to in the future. I recommend looking at some specific areas when you do this exercise. The first one being clarity. Did you understand the needs of the client? Were they specific about their objectives? What was the scope of the project? Were there any questions you could have asked for more clarification but you didn't? The second aspect to look at is communication. How effective was the communication between you and them? How many meetings or email exchanges did you have? Were there any non-verbal signals that they were sending? What could you read between the lines? Is there any information that you were missing and you only realized that after they gave you the feedback? The third area to look at is the proposal itself, or if you didn't submit a proposal, the conversation that you had with the potential client. Was that proposal of good quality? Did it address all their needs? Was it clearly structured and did it underline the results that the client could expect? Did you prepare enough? Have you done enough research, etc.? Another thing to make note of are what I like to call surprises. The things that happened or became apparent that you were not expecting. For example, you might have been going back and forth negotiating with someone only to find out that they weren't the decision maker and therefore they had no authority to sign a contract or make any major decisions. What other surprises did you discover? Looking at your experience from all these angles I've mentioned and reflecting on your actions will allow you to create a lessons learned log with things that worked well, mistakes that you've made and should avoid in the future, and potential unexpected things to be aware of. Besides the lessons learned, you can use the experience to attract future clients. Yes, really. As part of your content marketing strategy, you want to write about situations that your clients resonate with. So look at the proposal you've just written or the discussion you had with the potential client. They were likely based around certain pain points, around specific needs that they had and which they were willing to pay to resolve. Can you extract those pain points and write about how you could help someone if they were experiencing a similar situation? Don't be afraid to do this thinking that you are giving away too much value for free. You need to show people how you can help them and the results they can expect if they are to work with you. And the proposal you've written will give you plenty of ideas for your content creation and it will also act as a template for you to use when you apply for similar work in the future. My next tip is to leave room for hello, as we say in Romania, which translates into don't burn any bridges. You might feel disappointed that you didn't get the contract or you didn't agree to work together, but that doesn't mean you won't do so in the future. In fact, it might happen that the person or the organization they selected are not doing a good job or they had to withdraw for whatever reason. If that happens, you want to remain as a viable option for future work, not be remembered as someone who didn't take rejection very well and therefore left a bad impression. So be polite and courteous, always respond to emails and confirm receipt and thank them for the opportunity. Act as a professional regardless of whether you get the work or not. Closely related to this is possibly my most important tip. Don't take it personally. The fact that they decided not to purchase your services doesn't mean that they rejected you as a person. There's an important distinction between you the individual and you the business owner. And you should look at this from a business perspective, not from a personal point of view. I talk more about the shift in mindset you need to have when running your own business in this video. Learn to detach yourself from the equation as much as you can and don't let business rejection fool you into thinking that you are not good enough, smart enough, capable enough and all that nonsense. This has nothing to do with you personally and if you are to invest any energy and effort into something, don't invest it in putting yourself down after a rejection. Instead, invest energy and effort into improving your approach, your communication, learning from mistakes and putting together better proposals and having better sales conversations in the future. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, you'll be pleased to know that there is a lot more similar content on my channel. Why not start with the two videos that are suggested on the screen right now? 
that's it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.